It's now time to continue with Mr. Freeze. Well, hey guys, and welcome back. This is now part two of my Mr. Freeze build. Before I move on, I want to just quickly show you, uh, this is a carving, a pumpkin carving that my son's fiance did the other night. We had a little pumpkin carving here at our house. And uh, so she did such a phenomenal job with this. I just had to show you. And uh, this is the carving that my son did of a character from Animal Crossing. It's one of, it's a video game if you're not familiar with it. And I just used a pattern from a book that allowed me to create this bat here. And I just had to show you that before we start, just to get you guys in the Halloween mood as we move on. So I am ready to pick up where I left off. Let's begin with the ice gun. Now, the printer is on in the background, and what I've got going on there is one final attempt at printing the helmet. I just want to see if I can get a cleaner print of that, so we'll see how that turns out in a couple hours. In the meantime, I'm going to move on to the gun here. This is the piece that was printed in translucent resin, and uh, prior to priming, I did uh, mask off these little ports that you see on the front and back side of the barrel, including this round detail here uh, at the back of the gun. So the gun's going to be colored a dark uh, gun metal, and after doing so, I'll rub off the liquid mask. I'm going to do a light test to kind of see if we're getting enough light through the gun. If I don't, I'm just going to uh, not bother with lighting the gun. Speaking of light test, by the way, take a look at this. This is an LED that's been placed into the torso now after having rubbed off the liquid mask off the front and back domes. And you can see we're getting some good lighting through that dome. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, color the LED, though, with Tamiya's clear blue just to get a deeper blue color. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the gun. We'll see how this turns out. Okay, so here we have the gun, and I just used uh, Game Color's gun metal along with black. And so now I'm going to go ahead and peel these off. We'll do a quick light test. We'll see what happens. Okay, so this is a light test now, and I know you're probably looking at this going, actually, it looks pretty decent. Um, in person, it really doesn't look all that great. Um, the problem is the, uh, the ports here are fairly deep, and um, it's been difficult to get the liquid mask to, uh, to extrude the liquid mask uh, from each of these port holes evenly. So really what you end up with are a lot of jagged-looking uh, windows here that honestly just don't look very good. Uh, the video tends to wash things out so, uh, you know, they'll look a little brighter and um, kind of softens the effect here. But, uh, again, looking in person, it just doesn't look right. And the other thing, there are some ports, particularly on the front barrel, that I just couldn't get to because these pieces are in the way and, um, and that, to me, is very noticeable. So, as cool as it might look to you in the video, I'm actually going to not pursue this any further and move on. Well, it looks like our helmet is done. Let's go ahead and take it out of here and see how it's looking. All right, well, the gun metal has been reapplied to the ice gun here now, so it's all set to go. I'm ready to work on his gloves and his boots. And then here's the dome that I reprinted. You can still see on the surface here. There's no way I can really get that very smooth. Uh, that's about the best it's going to get. Uh, on the other hand, it does look like caked on ice to me, especially after we apply the clear coat now to uh, get rid of this fogginess. So I'm going to do that next, and we'll compare what we've got side by side. So it's time to move on to the boots and the gloves, and in keeping with our paint scheme from the animated series, I decided on this color called Lilac Dust from Ceram Coat. Now, craft paints like this can be used in your airbrush. It's a matter of just mixing it 50-50 mixed with water and adding an airbrush flow improver. I always start off by applying a very light mist to begin with and just gradually build up the coat. Alright, so um, here are the completed boots now and gloves, and I decided to paint these pieces in that light metallic blue that I uh, formulated for the torso. Okay, so before moving on, we're getting ready to piece them together. There's a couple things we need to do. Uh, one is I need to work on his face and head. Uh, I already have him painted now with this mix of wolf gray and ashen blue, both from MSP. Made a nice gray blue color. And so I have to paint his goggles, clear out the lenses there, and paint some highlights and shadows on his face. And uh, to catch you up now on the domes, uh, this is the dome I printed yesterday. And still not as good as the original one here. Okay, so I'm getting ready here to apply the shadows first. And what I've done is I've mixed up uh, 
uh, the ashen blue and wolf gray and added some uh, dark gray to it and before doing that I mixed up another batch of this except I made it a little bluer I just thought it would be good to add a little bit more blue to his base color here so we're ready to get started now let's go ahead and begin with the shadows guys and here is now a light test of his head and it's looking pretty good here okay guys well before I proceed on the final assembly I do have a couple more things to paint with the torso here um, I do want to at this stage go over the lighting uh, plan for the figure so there are gonna be four LEDs that are gonna light this figure up and we've got starting with the head this 1.8 millimeter LED that has been tinted red this is a perfect size for sliding right into this hole and uh, it's gonna rest right there and the head will mount right on top of it the torso is going to be lit with a uh, three millimeter LED. That this has been tinted clear blue, and uh, this is going to be slid right on top here, so it sits at the top of this tube here. It's a five millimeter styrene tube, and I have two markings here. Um, I've got one to indicate where to glue this into place. It's going to align with the top here, and that is then the proper height to allow illumination for the front and back dome by the three millimeter LED. The cross is a marking point for the SMD. This is a, a blue SMD here that is going to be illuminating the dome at his belt right here. And then the last uh, LED is for the gun. And I'm going to be using this 3 millimeter LED that's going to mount right here. And um, the wire is going to come down across his shoulder, down his back, and into this point here. As you can see, I've drilled now a hole for a five millimeter tube, a piece of a five millimeter tube, to allow the wire then to go into his suit. Covering the wire is going to be uh, pieces of this four millimeter tube, and I'm gonna cut it into small segments so that we can replicate the look of, this, of these segmented tubes here. All of this is going to feed through his leg and then out through his boot. Well, it's proving to be a challenge to create a tube that's going to look right to connect the gun to the suit. So what I'm doing here is I took this um, four millimeter tube and used a candle to heat it up so I could bend it. And so it's going to slide into here. But to create the segments, I'm just cutting up uh, this larger tube in small slices and just... Um, trying to clean them up so that they can slide on here uh, as I go along towards this side. All right guys, well this is how it turned out and it was a bit of work to get this into place. Uh, bear in mind I started off again with a straight four millimeter tube uh, and I had to use heat to bend it into this configuration and um, it just is not very flexible so to try to get this into place was, uh, was a bit difficult and after doing so to top that all off when I connected the wires to the battery to test the LED uh, it wasn't lighting up. So even though I tested it prior to inserting it in there, uh, something severed or got disconnected along the way. So I had to disassemble this and replace the LED, which I did so with a three millimeter warm LED. It's not as bright as the one I had in there to begin with, but it's just gonna have to do because I'm not taking this apart again. Um, but uh, yeah, after all said and done, I think I did a decent job with replicating the look of these tubes here. Let's go ahead and move on and assemble the figure and uh, get on with the stand. Okay, so I am waiting for this epoxy to dry and I'm going to glue on his last boot there. Uh, as you can see the wiring is all the way through now. So I'm going to go ahead and set him aside now and the next time you'll see him is in the final reveal. So let's go ahead now and work on the stand. So as for the display base, I'm using this piece here that I got at Hobby Lobby and there's more than enough room to accommodate our sound card and the 9 volt battery holder. You can see that I've already primed it and I've drilled some holes here. Uh, this is the area I'm going to be placing the speaker behind. 
And uh, so the idea is to create this little snowy terrain. Um, I'm going to be also using these crystals. I, I printed these in translucent resin. Uh, the files I got from Thingiverse, I'll put the links to down below. And I have three of them. I've got this larger one here, a medium-sized one, which I think I'll place back here, and a smaller one maybe on this side. And our figure is going to be facing in this direction. To create the snow, I'm going to be using uh, this stuff here uh, from Smooth Finish. All right, so the first step will be to locate where we're going to be putting the push switches. So I've got to drill holes to accommodate those switches there. So uh, I'll start with that, and we'll move on with creating our snowy scene. Okay, well, the push switches are in, and just a quick note here. I am, first of all, not much of a handyman, so there's probably some special tool that allows you to do this. Uh, but um, if you just drill a hole through this, um, the wood is too thick to allow enough thread to poke through on the opposite side to allow you to use the nut here and create a more finished look. So I just took my Dremel and uh, deepened out the hole on one side so that we can get enough thread to allow us to do that. And I also made an opening here for the toggle switch which will control our lights. All right, so I'm ready to hook up the switches, the battery compartment, speaker, and the circuit boards all glued into place. I just used super glue for all of that. I did use a little AB weld uh, with the batteries just because it's a little heavier. And uh, so that's all set and ready now for the switches. So I have the switches numbered, one to four, and um, they are quotes from all of the same episode, the Heart of Ice episode. And uh, quote one starts at the beginning of the episode, and then these two are from the middle uh, portions of the episode, and number four is gonna be from the very end of the episode. And then we have one final switch over this way for the lights. Now hooking up the switches is as simple as snipping these off and stripping the insulation and hooking them up to these prongs. So I moved ahead with soldering the switches, which is pretty straightforward. Moving on to display, the first thing I did was to glue down this piece of insulating foam, which is necessary because he needs something to prop his right foot on. Next, I attached him to the base with two-part epoxy, then moved on with connecting all the lights to the switch. Next was the application of smooth finish. And I didn't want to make the surface completely smooth. I wanted it to look like he trudged through this artificial snow he had created. All right, when I'm ready to wrap it up here, I'll show you the completed project next. Okay, well, I'm very pleased to show you here my completed Mr. Freeze. This again was printed using a file I found on CG Trader and is designed by Expecto. The file sells for about $10 and the link is in the video's description. If you want to find out a few more details about the file itself, please take a look at part one of this build. The figure is nicely detailed, which is what drew me to the sculpt to begin with. Although it's not an exact replica of anything we've seen on screen, it does have all the elements of the character, including his armored insulated suit, goggles, helmet, and freeze gun. Once completed, it makes a pretty impressive display as you can see. It stands about 8 inches from head to toe, and it includes another inch if you measure up to the gun. The color scheme I used here was based and is an homage to one of my favorite Batman shows, the Bruce Timm animated series from the 1990s. The figure sports the silverish blue armor, along with the bright blue highlights, black suit, red eyes, and lavender colored gloves. And I'd probably say the only disappointment with this sculpt is the helmet. I wish that it could be a little bit clearer. This is about as clear as I could get it. I will continue to look for alternatives, and there's a possibility I may be able to clear this up a little bit further using some sanding and further application of gloss clear coat. Now at first I printed the figure in solid gray resin because I had no intention on lighting the kit, but changed my mind at the beginning, and I'm glad I did because it really adds to the figure. The torso, head, and gun were all printed in translucent resin while leaving the rest gray. The gun and belt are lit with chip-sized SMDs from evandesigns.com, while the head uses a 1.8mm LED, also from Evans Designs. The torso is illuminated by a 3mm LED that was tinted with clear blue from Tamiya. And I should also note that I forgot to clarify in the video that I changed my mind about lighting the gun. After working with it a bit, I decided to leave the small windows painted, which, uh, painted in, I should say, which did not look right, and allowed the light to shine through the large round window and through the front of the barrel. This also required that I make one modification to the suit, and that was to connect the gun to the suit, and in doing so, try to replicate the look of the other tubing around his suit. The figure also includes this snow globe, which should have a little ballerina figure inside. I may revisit this to see if I can either paint one in or design a decal for it. But I decided to light it up with a chip size SMD that is ice blue. 
Now, as further homage to the show, I added four sound bites that were taken from the episode Heart of Ice, in which he made his debut in the animated series. The episode tells his backstory and follows the character as he sets off to exact revenge on the guy responsible for his accident and the continued frozen stasis of his wife. Alright, it's time to demonstrate the sound, and I th might have mentioned this earlier on in the video, but I have the quotes arranged in sequence in the order they appeared in the episode. So first... This is how I'll always remember you, surrounded by winter, forever young, forever beautiful. Rest well, my love. The monster who took you from me will soon learn that revenge is a dish. And the second quote is this one here. The cold eyes of vengeance are upon you. And then there's this one. Sooner or later all who stand in my way must feel the icy touch of death. And the episode ends with this. I failed you. I wish there were another way for me to say it. And lastly, I'm also very happy with the bass. The smooth finish worked out great with simulating snow. The bass is supposed to be showing him at a stop here after he's trudged through his artificially generated snow as he raises his gun, ready to wreak havoc on Gotham again. All right, guys, well, that is a wrap for this project. I hope you enjoyed following along. This really was a fun project to work on, and I would encourage any of you Batman fans, if you get into 3D printing, to try this one out. Uh, when you are done with the project, you will end up with a very unique sculpt to add to your Batman collection. Again, the figure is available at cgtrader.com. The link is below. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at interstellarmother at gmail.com. I sure hope this video got you a little bit into the Halloween mood. I know it's been hard to get in the mood of anything because this year has been such a dud. Halloween is one of my favorite holidays, and I really will miss not seeing the trick-or-treaters this year. It's one of my favorite things to do is to hand out candy uh, on Halloween. And as I end this video, I'm going to do one more thing to hopefully get you into the Halloween mood, and that is to include this little slideshow. Uh, earlier this week, I posted a request on Facebook uh, to see if any of you guys could send me some pictures of any bills you did this year that were related to Halloween or have a Halloween theme. And uh, a few of you guys were kind enough to send some down, so thank you very much for these pictures. It's always fun to look at other people's work, so I hope you enjoy it. Take care and happy Halloween, everybody. I will see you in the next video.